the number of people with COVID-19 being treated in hospital has risen above 2,000 for the first time. The number of hospitalizations has increased for 24 consecutive days. Some 200 of those patients are in intensive care, while the HSE says a further 200 people are receiving high-grade respiratory support outside ICU. Chief Executive Paul Reid says that national surge plans have been activated and teams are working hard to remain in control. Well, let's hear the latest now from our health correspondent, Fergal Barrows, who's at the Department of Health. Fergal, as we said, the number's increasing, more than 2,000 now in hospital and 200 in ICU. Talk us through the latest figures, please. Yes, those figures in terms of the number of patients with COVID-19 in hospital, I mean, that's the highest number we've seen in 2023. So hospitals are facing increased uh, pressure. And the latest figure in terms of the intensive care units, there's 200 people with COVID-19 in the hospital uh, ICU units this morning. We know that there's about 400 people overall uh, getting ventilation and respiratory uh, support. And the busiest hospital is Cork University Hospital with 162 uh, patients with COVID-19 there. You University Hospital Limerick, St Vincent's in Dublin and Galway University Hospital. Overall case numbers around the country and the community, they are coming down but from a very high base. But we had 2,944 uh, yesterday. So the hope is those numbers will continue to reduce. And then also today the HSC says it's going to look at reintroducing uh, testing of close contacts uh, of confirmed cases once those daily case numbers come down below 2,000 a day. Fergal, I want to ask you about that other story in the news today, the apology from the master of the Coombe Hospital for giving COVID-19 vaccine to relatives of, fam of uh, staff at the hospital. What can you tell us? Yes, I mean, last week we heard uh, uh, claims um, that some non-patient-facing staff were being vaccinated. And then over the weekend we had the Coombe situation with 16 family members of staff given the vaccine. And that has caused controversy. I think any deviation from the agreed uh, schedule, given the limited vaccine supplies, that is going to cause uh, upset. Although had the vaccines been discarded, that also would have been a big issue. And the, this issue has caused some concern in political circles today. We need to get a very clear understanding very quickly as to what a hospital is told to do by the HSE if they have so-called spare vaccines. Um, I, I, because the phrase spare vaccine is it's such a ridiculous phrase. There aren't spare vaccines in our country. There are many, many people, including frontline healthcare workers, uh, who are w awaiting their vaccine and are anxious in that regard. So the Minister for Health, Stephen Dutton, the Minister for Health Stephen Donnelly has uh, sought a full report uh, from the hospital itself. And of course, the hospital has apologised for what happens. Of course, once these vials are, are thawed and made up, they have to be used within about five hours. But this really is about following the procedure and making sure that the people in the specified groups are the ones that get the vaccination at this point. All right, Fergal Bowers, thank you. Well, COVID-19 is having a severe and disproportionate impact on vulnerable children, a new report has found. The latest report by the Child Care Law Reporting Project found instances of severe neglect of young children. It has also found the pandemic is causing reduced access for parents to children in care and a restriction in services for children and their parents. The latest volume of childcare cases reported by the project is dominated by the impact of COVID-19. While the pandemic has been difficult for all children, the 48 cases reported by the project show it has had a disproportionate effect on the most vulnerable. Two cases highlighted the effect of the long closure of schools last year on children who needed help. In one case, a young child ended up in intensive care with suspected septic shock due to an infection caused by head lice. In another, a school principal called to a house to find one child with her head shaved and a younger child in hospital with scabies, ringworm and head lice. Those things would have been picked up much earlier had the child been able to go to school. Uh, and I think it does underline the fact that schools are just so important for child welfare on a whole number of fronts. The report also highlighted cases where children in care have not been able to have meaningful access to their parents because of fears about COVID and assessments which could allow family reunification have been delayed or cancelled. Parents with mental health or addiction problems have had difficulties getting help and court proceedings have been delayed. 
Dr Coulter suggested the government should consider early vaccination for frontline child protection workers and some foster carers to try to reduce the impact on vulnerable children as much as possible. Orla O'Donnell, RTE News. Garthi say more than 400 people have been fined for being outside their homes without a reasonable excuse, 300 over the weekend. 170 were fined in Wicklow for travelling to the mountains, while another 30 in Longford after they had travelled to Ballymahan, where the Newcastle Woods amenity is based. Five people were fined in the Phoenix Park in Dublin, while over 40 were turned away. Let's get more on all of this now from our crime correspondent, Paul Reynolds. Paul, it seems the Garthi really cracking down on people venturing outside their 5k limit and it's in various parts of the country isn't it? It is, Eileen, and the Gardaí have uh, announced already last week and the week before that they are now taking a tougher approach, and that's uh, quite evident in these figures that have been released today. I mean, they, they're still saying that most people, the vast majority of people, are complying with the uh, COVID-19 regulations, but an increasing number of people are starting to breach those reg regulations. The latest figures are that so far 400 people have been fined uh, for being outside their homes without a reasonable excuse, and some of those people have been within the five-kilometre area, but but still, outside without a reasonable excuse, you're liable to be fined. Uh, 300 of those fines have been issued uh, over the weekend. Now, we only have figures for two counties at the moment. Uh, uh, Wicklow and County Longford. In Wicklow, there was 170 people fined for visiting the, the mountains over the weekend. Another 30 people uh, were fined uh, in Ballymahan, in the Ballymahan area, for uh, Garthi suspect for visiting the Newcastle Woods amenity there. Uh, and as well as that, another 270 cars uh, were turned back where people were directed uh, to go home uh, in both Wicklow and Longford. There are also some provisional figures available for, for Dublin. Uh, here in the capital, the uh, the figures, the number of people that have been fined it, it, are far lower. Uh, there's only uh, been 10 fines issued uh, by the Gardaí in Dublin on the checkpoints, but that's because uh, Gardaí say the checkpoints are on the inbound routes and most of those people who have been fined have been fined for leaving the city. Here in the Phoenix Park as well, there have been fines issued. Uh, 41 people were directed uh, to go home to leave the Phoenix Park. Uh, they had come for exercise, they were deemed to be outside their, their five kilometre limit. Uh, and another five people uh, were fined uh, while they were found in the Phoenix Park over the weekend for breaching the regulations. All right, Paul Reynolds, thank you. Now, international fishing vessels are to be allowed land their catches in five additional Irish ports from early next month. The decision was confirmed this morning by the Minister for Agriculture, Food and the Marine. Currently, international trawlers, including those registered in Northern Ireland, are confined to landing at Killybegs in County Donegal and Castletown Bear in County Cork. Well, let's get more on this now from our Northern editor, Tommy Gorman, who's standing by for us. Tommy, we reported on this extensively last month. Brexit rules causing real difficulties for fishermen. Remind us again of the background to this. Well, there was an issue since Brexit because, say, for instance, in Northern Ireland ports, foreign vessels, and they'd include ones registered in the Republic of Ireland, they could come ashore with their catches to seven ports along the Northern Ireland coast. But there was no reciprocal arrangement in the Republic because international vessels, including those uh, registered in Northern Ireland, could only come ashore in two main ports, in Kitty Beggs in County Donegal and in um, Castletown Bear in County, County Cork. Now, Charlie McConnell, the Minister for the Marine, recognised there was a problem and he acted on it, as he explained to me down the line a short time ago. Today I have designated an additional five ports uh, bringing to a total of seven around the country uh, for Northern Irish registered vessels to be able to land. And I certainly hope that as a result of this, it will mean that there will be uh, the capacity and possibility for those vessels now to be able to land the, their fish and to be able to continue with their livelihoods in the time ahead post-Brexit. So, Tommy, this will be very good news for the entire fishing sector. What have they been saying? Well, the ports involved, first of all, there are three of them in County Donegal. Um, the important one of Greencastle, uh, of Rathmullen uh, and Burton Port. And then further down the coast, uh, Rosseville in County Galway and on the east coast, uh, Hoth in County Dublin. Uh, and you have to remember that, say, the crews who would be using these, a lot of these would actually be based in the Republic of Ireland, but they would have Northern Ireland registered vessels. And this was the kind of reaction I got from Alan McCullough, who who's a representative of the Northern Ireland fishery sector. And remember, 
the Northern Ireland was allowing seven ports to be used for this kind of arrangement. This is Alan McCullough a short time ago. Uh, like you look towards Donegal, a lot of inshore guys there with, with very, very small boats, where it's totally impractical even to sail around the peninsula and land into Kelly, Kelly, Kelly Bay. So guys in that kind of boat were affected. And again, guys in bigger boats as well that fish in the Atlantic, that fish in the Irish Sea, who traditionally would have landed into Irish ports, would have brought a lot of important trade uh, to coastal communities right around the island of Ireland. And that was the loss too. And that's something that really that needs to be taken further into consideration. It's not just about fishermen uh, landing fish and having the convenience to land fish into these locations. It's the trade, it's the custom that these boats bring to small communities in terms of the grocer, in terms of the oil supplier, so many aspects of those coastal communities. Eileen, this is a good news story, but this is just a small battle in what's going to be a very, very long war because there is this very real sense in the entire fishing sector that it has been shortchanged by Brexit. So you can expect to see uh, lots uh, of more controversy surfacing. All right, Tommy Gorman, thank you. Now, a new online mechanism has been launched to help people retrain or update their skills. The government-backed website, The Right Course, has been described as a one-stop shop for anyone considering their next steps in education. Well, let's find out more of this now from our political reporter, Sandra Hurley, who's at Leinster House of Us. Sandra, a one-stop shop, what exactly does this mean? Yes, well, essentially, this is an online website. They're calling it a portal. It's at uh, gov.ie slash the right course. And people can go online and they can find out any sort of options uh, that are available there in terms of upskilling. It could be uh, third level courses. It could be a short part time course. It could be apprenticeships or in work training. And the idea is to bring all this together into the one place to outline what's available and the supports that are available. Now, it's, it's it is targeted at not just employees but also businesses and people who are unemployed also and uh, there's also options for people if they are made unemployed by in relation to covid that they could uh, get this training they could do a short part-time course during that time but they wouldn't lose their benefits now, the announcement was made today by the Minister for Higher Education, Simon Harris. He said that uh, there were a lot of options out there, but he said this would really simplify what's available because what's out there, he said, can really overburden people. So this would set out all the options, all the supports, and it's all available in the one place. All right, Sandra Hurley, thank you. A 28-year-old man has admitted murdering an 11-year-old boy in the south of the country over a year ago. The man, who cannot be named for legal reasons, came before the Central Criminal Court today via video link from prison. He pleaded guilty to murdering the boy, who also cannot be named because he is a minor in the southwest of the country on November the 3rd, 2019. Now, still to come on the one o'clock news, the EU and US calls for the release of Russian opposition politician Alexei Navalny, who was arrested shortly after his arrival in Moscow yesterday. Will you teach me to ride a bike tomorrow? Why not, Mom? Working. Dad? Fab. Okay. Sheldon, it's great to have knowledge, but you don't need to show it off all the time. Oh, I don't mind. Young Sheldon continues Friday at 7.30 on RTE 1 and RTE Player. You're not getting this back. Oh. What happens when Lenore lovers try Lenore and scent boosters? Oh. Ooh. What is it? It's the Lenore Dream Team. Just condition as usual, boost with the matching scent and go. Mm. Mine just too good. The Lenore Dream Team. More of the scent you love. <laughs> the Sky Sale is now on. So get award-winning Sky TV and ultra-fast broadband. Well, that's nice. Together from an incredible €50 Euro a month. I think you've got exactly what we need. Enjoy our best ever Wi-Fi and stream all the TV you love in one place. Easy. The whole world is in your grasp. Save big with Sky TV and ultra-fast broadband from just €50 Euro a month for 12 months. Search Sky 50. Let's face it. Humans are pretty limited animals. No fur. No claws. 
no wings. Yet we survived by learning one simple thing. The world won't adapt to us, so let's adapt ourselves to the world. The new Peugeot 3008, time to change. Welcome back to the One O'Clock News. The Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny has appeared at a court hearing in Moscow after he was arrested by authorities last night. He accused the Russian government of the highest level of lawlessness after he returned to Russia for the first time since he was poisoned with a nerve agent in August. The EU and the US have called for his release. Alexei Navalny was detained by police after his flight from Germany landed in Moscow on Sunday. The 44-year-old is one of Vladimir Putin's most outspoken critics. He returned to Russia five months after he was almost killed in a nerve agent attack last summer. He blames Moscow, but the Kremlin denies any involvement. This afternoon, Alexei Navalny appeared at an ad hoc hearing held in a police station on the outskirts of Moscow. In a video posted to Twitter, Mr Navalny said he didn't understand what is going on. I have seen a lot of jokes about the judicial system here, he said. It's not possible what is happening here. It's the highest level of lawlessness. The arrest has drawn widespread condemnation from leaders from Europe and the US. European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen said Russian authorities should immediately release Mr Navalny and ensure his safety. Russia's foreign minister has dismissed the criticism. Sergei Lavrov said Western politicians were using it as a way to divert attention from domestic problems. Russian authorities accused Mr Navalny of violating conditions imposed after a conviction for embezzlement for which he received a suspended sentence. He has always said the case was politically motivated. Alexei Navalny's decision to return home is seen by his supporters as a direct challenge to Vladimir Putin. Russian officials say he will remain in custody until a court ruling. Dmitry O'Donnell, RTE News. Washington DC is in an unprecedented security lockdown as Americans brace for possible violence ahead of President-elect Joe Biden's inauguration on Wednesday. 25,000 National Guard troops have been deployed across the city with further deployments in many state capitals following warnings from law enforcement of possible violence by supporters of President Donald Trump who falsely claims the election was stolen from him. In China, miners trapped underground for more than a week have sent up a note warning some of them are injured, water surrounds them and they urgently need medicine. 22 workers became trapped more than 600 metres from the gold mine's entrance after an explosion in the eastern Shandong province. Over the weekend, rescuers heard knocking and drilled down to recover the note, which says that a dozen of those trapped are still alive. Now over to Adam for all the business news. Adam. Thanks, Eileen. Well, most Irish CEOs unsurprisingly see the global economic downturn as the main challenge facing their business this year. That's according to the latest IBEC CEO survey, which also highlighted concerns beyond the pandemic around Brexit, staffing and the environment. And the emphasis then as the survey is saying will come on to the retention and upskilling of people and employee well-being. And I think they will be the, some of the main drivers. The other issue, I think, which is not a current priority, given everything else is going on, is that trend to a low carbon transition. I think that's taken somewhat of a back seat because of the other priorities. But I would expect that the environmental, social and governance issues, so-called ESG factors, will be a, a dominant priority um, for 2022 onwards. The pandemic has also had a big impact on the number of new company formations, which reached a four-year low last year. According to CRIF VisionNet, just under 22,000 new businesses were registered in 2020. That's down 4% compared to 2019, which is a far more modest decline than the one seen during the financial crisis in 2008. The fishing sector saw the biggest decreases in startups, followed by leasing, utilities and hospitality. The strongest growth was in legal, accounting and business sectors. China's economy continued to grow in 2020 despite the pandemic, but the rate was far lower than in previous years. Overnight, the country posted a 2.3% increase in GDP for last year. That's the slowest pace of growth seen in China in four decades. 
and it compares to the 6% growth figure recorded in 2019. However, the figure also shows the country's growth had picked up pace towards the end of last year, with better than expected growth of 6.5% in the final quarter. And European car firms Fiat Chrysler and PSA Group have formally sealed their merger, creating the world's fourth largest auto group. This morning, shares in the newly formed Stellantis began trading in Milan and Paris and will list in New York tomorrow. The $52 billion tie-up brings a range of car brands under one roof, including Fiat, Peugeot, Ferrari, Jeep and Opel. The aim is to create a company with deep enough pockets to fund the shift to electric driving, taking on bigger rivals like Toyota and Volkswagen in the process. Taking a look at the markets now, the Isaac 20 index is 0.6% lower. Origin Enterprises and Kern Homes have gained. Ryanair and ICG are both lower. In London, the FTSE index is down 0.3%, while the DAX in Frankfurt is 0.1% higher. The CAC in Paris is down 0.2%, while in, the to in Tokyo, the Nikkei closed 0.9% lower. And on the currencies, the euro buys 89 pence sterling and one US dollar and 20.6 cents. That's the business news. Back to you, Eileen. Thank you, Adam. Now, Waterford will become one of the few women's GAA teams in the country to own their own pitch outright when a new facility is built in Dungarvan. The 11-acre site is situated beside the Waterford Greenway and is the result of six years of behind-the-scenes work. Waterford's breakthrough comes just over a year after our Ma ladies got the green light for developing a ground in Killeen, while Cork's Camogie Grounds in Mahan was opened back in 2012. The Waterford ladies are so reliant on all the GA clubs, you know, to use their facilities and we're so grateful to all of them. But there just came a time, especially when we look back to 2015, that we realised that we had to actually go off and try and get our own field. And it, our reality, our, sorry, our, our, um, our dreams came to reality, I suppose, today. Former Cork footballer Breed Stack has been released from hospital after suffering a spinal injury at the weekend while playing Aussie Rules. The 34-year-old was playing in her first game for her new club, the Giants, when she was injured in a tackle. The club confirmed she had a stable fracture of the C7 vertebrae and no injury to the surrounding nerves. She's expected to make a full recovery and will remain in Australia for her rehabilitation. Now, tennis players in isolation have been told they will get no special treatment to leave their rooms while in quarantine ahead of the Australian Open. 72 players are now isolating after being deemed close contacts of positive cases of COVID-19. Many players have complained about having to train in their hotel bedrooms while they complete their 14-day quarantine. Uh, all four are, like, uh, are associated with the tennis and they're all tucked away safely in hotel quarantine. And I know there's been a bit of bit of chatter from a number of players about the rules. Well, the rules apply to them as they apply to everybody else. And they were all briefed on that before they came. And that was a condition on which they came. So when, there's no special treatment here. People are being treated because a virus doesn't, doesn't treat you specially. So neither do we. Finally, this lunchtime, a bequest of €2 million Euro has been left to UCC's Department of Music. It's the largest gift the department has received in its history. British master builder Sidney V. Regan, who died in 2017, left almost all of his estate to the university. He also left €200,000 to four local charities. He moved to Cork with his wife in the 1960s and became very involved in the local music scene. A member of the Commodore Male Voice Choir in Cove, he was also founder of the Cove Gramophone Society. And a look at the main news again this lunchtime. Hospitals are under continuing pressure with the numbers being treated for COVID-19 rising above 2,000 for the first time. Some 200 of those patients are in intensive care, while a further 200 people are receiving high respiratory support outside of ICU. The HSE Chief Executive Paul Reid says that national surge plans have been activated and teams are working hard to remain in control. And remember, you can keep up to date with that story and more on the RTE News app. And that is Monday's Lunchtime News. From all the team, good afternoon. I will. Enjoy the great taste and nutritional benefits of Avonmore lactose-free milk. 
Hi there and good afternoon. Well, quite a wet couple of days ahead of us with heavy persistent rain through today and tonight and into tomorrow and a yellow warning in operation for Connacht, North Leinster, Cavan and Monaghan with that heavy persistent rain and the likelihood of some localised flooding. So that's due to an area of low pressure which is crossing the country. When that low pressure clears away, there will be a colder air mass setting in, bringing some wintry showers at times. Now for today, so far it's been a fairly cloudy overcast start to the day with some light drizzle in places but the drizzle will become heavier and more persistent turning into rain in the southwest this afternoon and gradually pushing northeastwards across the country. Now top temperatures today will rise to just between 4 and 6 degrees in the north around 7 to 10 degrees elsewhere and continuing cold in northern areas tonight. Elsewhere again a little bit milder around 6 to 9 degrees at best with freshening southerly winds and the rain Rain will be the main feature tonight with heavy persistent rain right across the country, especially across northern parts and down along the west coast where there will be the risk of some spot flooding. And that yellow warning is in place so do keep an eye on our website for more details. So Tuesday then we'll start off wet and breezy with widespread rain and the continued risk of some flooding. The rain will become more intermittent though across the southern half of the country for tomorrow, more persistent further to the north and that's where it will be colder again, just two to five degrees. Elsewhere values around eight to 11 degrees with freshening southwesterly winds. And then it looks like on Wednesday, the rain will continue in parts of the east and south. And some of that will turn to sleet later in the day with maximum temperatures in the afternoon rising to between just two and five degrees. Now on Thursday overall it'll be a dry sunny day in many places. There will be some showers further to the north, temperatures of around four to six degrees but it's the wind chill factor that'll be the feature with the cold northwesterly winds and some of those showers in the north will be quite wintry at times. That's it for me for the moment. Good afternoon. Enjoy the great taste and nutritional benefits of Avonmore lactose-free milk.